Welcome back, everybody, to the Land Between the Meadows, the Kentucky History Podcast. I'm here, Jameson Cable, with my co-host, Daniel Hopkins, and we're pleased and pleasured to be in the City Hall of Livingston with the Livingston City Mayor, Jason Medley. How you doing? Doing good. You guys all right today? Doing good. Doing good. Looking forward good. to it. We've got us a good tour of the old... Uh, Livingston School Building and kind of what it's been turned into, which is, looks like some great work has been done and uh, more to come, I, I, I hope. And uh, But we're going to talk about some Li- Livingston history. And uh, Jason, w- w- what do you know? you got to know a little bit around here. <laughs> well, uh, um, just like I was saying earlier, I've, I have I've tried to be a sponge to try mm-hmm. to soak up as much uh, history of the town that I can because anytime somebody comes in, you want to be able to explain mm-hmm, mm-hmm. where you come from, where you're at now, and what your vision is for the future. Mm-hmm. And uh, getting in, and as mayor, even the first week, I really got to know my hometown. Yeah, and yeah. and that was important because you know uh, history is dying every day. Mm-hmm. And the saddest part about it was I had set up some meetings with uh, different. Uh, people in the area that would uh, could really f- fill me in on it. Yeah, and a lot of the people I talked to said, "Well, if you could have just talked to so and so, if you could have yeah. just talked to so and so, they really knew." And and we didn't take that time to write this stuff down. Mm-hmm. And there was a lady in Mount Vernon, and me and her got to talking. We talked over the phone, and I said, "I tell you what, I would love to come uh, and sit with you." And just uh, record some of what you got to say because yeah. it's all yeah. awesome stuff. Yeah. Unfortunately, she uh-huh. passed away before I got the yeah. chance to uh, get up her and see her. Mm-hmm. But we do have some local historians uh, left, and and I have been trying to absorb as much as I can. And the thing about uh, history, it's hard to get a hundred percent accurate. You're right. So, yeah. You know, even just having the stories, it puts a mental picture of what that person experienced yeah. years ago. Yeah. yeah, and we talked about one of our first episodes on Rock Castle. The first person to settle in Rock Castle is, is supposedly the uh, Stephen Langford. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, it, but it was uh, whenever I think John Lyra was looking back into the, the history. There was another Stephen Langford. There was two Stephen Langfords in Rock Castle, which made things muddy and confusing. But he is given credit for, I think, the being the first settler in Rock Castle. Um, if, if I, if my recollection to how the story goes, uh, some of his family and a guy named Uriah Grisham owned two parts in mm-hmm. Livingston, mm-hmm. and one ended up buying the other one out. And Uriah Grisham went on to be uh, something he, well, a politician. He, yeah, he's a legislator. Yeah. He's buried in. Uh, Ward Cemetery over across okay. the bridge. So yeah. If you ever want to visit that, mm-hmm. he's still here. So mm-hmm. that's pretty cool. In that first episode of Rock Castle County, we had talked about how the names, some of the names never left. And it was funny when we did the tour of the uh, of the school, you know, there's, and, there's, Langford. there's Langfords in the pictures in the 1960s mm-hmm. and their ancestors moved here 200 years earlier. Like even those family names just sort of They're still here. They, they, you yeah. know, they, they, they settled and they never really moved. And I'm sure there's other names I just didn't catch yeah. on when we were looking, but there's plenty yeah. of other uh, connections of people. Some people, you know, stayed a little while and left and some people mm-hmm. are still here even today. So. Mm-hmm. But I can give you just a little bit of history between that Langford name and Uriah Grisham. Mm-hmm. Back in uh, when Uriah Grisham was here, his wife filed for a divorce, mm-hmm. and uh, and when she went for the courts, they uh, they said, "What is your uh, reason for divorce? Mm-hmm. You want divorce? Yeah, divorce Uriah Grisham." He said, "Well, he's he's beating me to death." Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And Uriah stood up and said, "What's wrong with whooping a?" An adulterous wife. Oh man! <laughs> so the the court ruled there was nothing wrong with what he was doing. Oh um, wow! She didn't get her divorce. Different wow, time. Wow, yeah, <laughs> different is, different time. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is that is intense. I don't know, uh, that, that that might not fly in the courthouse today. <laughs> no, yeah, if that was no, your That's just a little fun. Yeah, you know, yeah. That might not be fun. But <laughs> <it's> <laughs> interesting, fun for us. For us, yeah, back two hundred years later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which I guess in that time, that would be, they, the court would have probably been in what well, would have been not burning even now. Yeah, same same um, but yeah, the, so Livingston was originally named Fish Point. Is that the uh, Indian name was Fish Point because mm-hmm. uh, the selling point for this area was the fact, obviously, the Rock Castle River. Yeah, they uh, the Indians taught um, 
uh, the local settlers how to smoke fish and, mm -hmm. and eat mm -hmm. the, the fish. And David Owens has got the Indian name of what the river used to be, but uh, mm -hmm. I can't remember what it is. It's an Indian term, but it was the River of the Red Horse. Yeah. Was the first name of Rock wow, River. That, okay. That's cool. Uh, because the Red Horse was the popular selling and mm -hmm. trading mm -hmm. fish mm -hmm. at that time. Okay. Whenever we, um, uh, whenever I was looking into the uh, history, I guess, the first person, uh, that, uh, Walker, Thomas yes. Walker, Named it, named Rockcastle River the Lawless River. Mm -hmm. But then the next guy who came in, I, I lost his name right off. He named it the he named it the Rockcastle River mm -hmm. uh, because of the rocks and so yeah. forth. But it, it's, it, even before the Lawless River, it had another name. And it, sure. it's, we'll have to, Rock Castle uh, got its name by this rock mm -hmm. formation that's down 490, mm -hmm. just just off the can Rock Castle River. Her? You can in the wintertime. Okay. I don't think you would probably get much yeah, visual yeah. of it in the summertime, but wintertime you can you can mm -hmm. see kind of how they thought it was be cool to call it the Rock Castle River. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the Indian name for it was River of the Red Horse, and there's a that's our interpretation of what they call it. <laughs> yeah. Something yeah. I could I wouldn't even want to try to attempt to explain mm -hmm. it or mm -hmm. pronounce the name they called it. Uh, well, with uh, and, and you know, once the settlers, I guess the the big industrial thing that came in was the river, the railroad. And once the railroad came in, mm -hmm. things changed for my, many towns. And, and the railroad, and, and like I said, the years are kind of uh, a little bit muddy. But mm -hmm. uh, we've got some uh, books that's got the actual dates. But we'll say the late 1800s, the railroad came yeah. in, and Livingston became. Uh, a really hustle and bustle town. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of section houses mm -hmm. that the railroad workers stayed in. I would say that Livingston is about 30 to 40 percent of the structures that it once had. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The population in the early 1900s, late 1800s, was right around a thousand people. Yeah. The population today is about 200. Yeah. So you could imagine the how, and that wasn't counting the people who came here to buy, sell, or trade. You have back in those days. Those days, you had a city population, mm -hmm. and then you had a trade population. Right? Gotcha. <laughs> two, that, different, yeah. two different, two things. different things. The city yeah. is a half mile square, mm -hmm. so it, it cuts out a lot of people, and they liked it that way because they just wanted city folk mm -hmm. deciding the law of the city. their area. Yeah, and everybody else was considered trade yeah. population. So gotcha. if we had a thousand city population, we probably had a four thousand or more yeah. trade yeah. population. So what the railroad did, uh, are there, is the railroad, does it still exist? Are there train tracks through Livingston today? Yeah. And the, we at, at our bridge right here, we got one of the only things in the United States that has three modes of transportation that cross. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Three different modes. You've got, uh, obviously, automobile that goes across. Mm -hmm. You've got river. Mm -hmm. And then you've got train tracks. Wow. So you've got all yeah. intersecting in one spot mm -hmm, is mm -hmm. the neat thing so okay. that's one of the that's only places cool. and we also we uh we're one of the only places that has three different recognized trace that come through mm -hmm. the Daniel Boone trace the Skaggs trace mm -hmm. and uh the Shell Toy trace it mm -hmm. all comes from okay. here so you mentioned when we were taking the tour which you know people listening we didn't take the tour but you mentioned that there's a building that they do music in and you called it the depot building was that the train depot or no. is that just the name that sort of stuck later the uh the, the actual train depot sit at the south end of livingston mm -hmm. and we named that the depot for a couple of different reasons and one is to pay homage to what the city was yeah yeah you know kind of how it got its claim to fame mm -hmm. and to uh, for religious reasons mm -hmm. you know okay because mm -hmm. there's a lot of reference to trains and mm -hmm. and religion so um, that's why we named it there, you know. Yeah, yeah. But what that building was built in 1910. It was a uh, Masonic Lodge, and then they sold the bottom half. There was two deeds to uh -huh, it. Uh -huh. They sold the bottom half, and probably its most popular. Um, uh, it's probably most popular facilitated as a grocery store mm -hmm, okay. mm -hmm. and a dry goods store. Yeah, Forster yeah. Mullins ran that for a long time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, now, now the name of Livingston. That's another. Uh, uh, is it that 100% sure? Because uh, I, I, the thing I got was James Livingston, who was a railroad worker. That the story about the name of Livingston was uh, there was another uh, uh, depot on mm -hmm. the north end of town. There, mm -hmm. were, there were one, and then this one became, on the south end, became the most popular. Mm -hmm. 
the one on North End of town was a mobile depot. Mm -hmm. And so people would get off when the train work, the train section guys and mm -hmm. gangs would get off. They stayed at the James Livingston Inn. Mm -hmm. Well, Livingston hadn't been incorporated at that time. Yeah. So when they was receiving mail from their families, they didn't receive it as Fish Point, which uh -huh. was the first name. Yeah. They received it as the James Livingston Inn. Gotcha. You're sending your mail to the James That's Livingston right. Inn. Huh. So to make a long story short, they dropped James and they dropped Station, Livingston <laughs> Station, <laughs> and it just became <laughs> Livingston. It was incorporated around the 1880s. Gotcha. So not really necessarily named after him, but named after her. It's yeah, the hotel. The hotel. Yeah. So, were there any living? Did he? Did James stay? Are there Livingstons in Livingston? Or there is no Livingstons <laughs> in Livingston. <laughs> and that was. And I had looked for that. I actually had looked for James Livingston to have something of him. Mm -hmm. But uh, there is no Livingstons in Livingston. Wow. And I don't know really where he got off to. I think he sold his part to another mm -hmm. uh, um, entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then they sold again to the Dickersons. Yeah. The Dickersons owned the property. Mm -hmm. They sold again to the to somebody else. That somebody else sold it to the mm -hmm. RCIDA in Rockcastle mm -hmm. County. And that is the existing side of the new marathon and the family mm -hmm. dollar store. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, now, whenever, I mean, you know, when the, the railroad was just such a big entity that like changed all the small towns and yeah. really brought them to life. So you aware of some of the things that was available then that you know, probably Casey, that. basically back then the railroad was the main mm -hmm. source of transportation mm -hmm. you took a so if you want to do shopping say you wanted to uh, spend the day shopping yeah you would take the uh, 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. to Louisville and then take the 6 p.m. back to Livingston yeah You'd buy, you could buy furniture, mm -hmm. clothing, have it all, and you just drive up. back down to Livingston, what you couldn't buy yeah. here. This was the end of the line. Mm -hmm. The trains come down, and the south end of Livingston, they met a roundhouse, yep. and they, they disconnected the locomotive. Yeah. They, they ran it over to the roundhouse, they turned it around, they shot it back up the other track, they come back and caught in the front of the train. Went back that way. Yeah. That's how it worked. Yeah. Later on, they built a bridge that mm -hmm. connected from from Livingston on down to Corbin. Mm -hmm. The yard that you see in Corbin mm -hmm. is the yard, per se, yeah. that was in Livingston. Oh, okay. okay. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. That was where this the end of the line moved to. Gotcha. Of course, you see why that it didn't stay in Livingston. The geography of mm -hmm. it was mm -hmm. hold. Yeah. yeah. They've got acres upon acres yeah. down there and we just had probably 15 mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so it, it went down to a bigger area they yeah. moved on down the line now Mullen station up here what is, what does that have to do with Mullen, Mullen with station is, was basically just a rock quarry okay rock uh, quarry and had nothing to do with the train really just came through there it came through there and actually if you want to go into Pine Hill at one point in time Pine Hill was was battling with Livingston and Mount Vernon as one of the biggest hubs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it, it was pretty productive yeah. a little early yeah. too. Um, whenever uh, you look at the railroads and, and they mine coal and everything, yeah, yeah, the yeah. whole. The whole thing. That's what that was, you know, because I've done. We've, I've looked into my life's from Hazard, so you know, a bit more eastern Kentucky. But how much coal was really mined in 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 Rock Castle? I mean, I, I don't find as much as we're people. we're probably the. The foothills of the, the yeah. coal industry, yeah. but we had enough to where we get we some. can get coal severance and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. So they, they went a lot, but they were some. Yeah, yeah. Um, which of course you got Salt Peter Cave as well. You get Salt Peter. Um, how much? Uh, well, what, what was there, there? Was there a theater in? Um, yeah, Web Theater. Mm -hmm. Web Theater. I'm going to give you an interesting story about that. Back in the old days, you know, to have a thousand people and a four thousand person's trade population, yeah. you had two or three doctors. Mm -hmm. Well, there used to be a red house that sat over across the bridge that was Doc Amex's place. Mm -hmm. And the, the story goes that uh, some of his relatives, maybe the ones that lived there before Doc Amex mm -hmm. did, I'm very muddy with this recollection. Mm -hmm. I think it's just a neat story. Yeah. When Pearl Harbor was bombed, the one that lived there, it wasn't Doc Amex, the other guy that lived there, I can't remember his name, but uh, he found out that his son sank at his ship sank in yeah. Pearl Harbor at Webb Theater watching the show. Oh wow. Because a news flash came over 
and he seen that his son had perished at Pearl Harbor wow. because when they said, wow. what was the ship? It's Arizona? Was yeah. Arizona the one that sunk? Yeah, well, there was several, there's yeah. There's one, yeah. <laughs> I think he was on the Arizona, and when he seen that it sank with no survivors, he knew his son. So he saw it on a newsreel wow. at the, at the yeah. So where was the, it, where was the theater? Is the theater still there? The theater burnt in 19, uh, the late 70s, mm -hmm. so early 80s. So uh, it was built, there was a metal building put up mm -hmm. in place of it, and now it's Rock Castle Outdoor Company. The guy mm -hmm. sells their lease, rents to stand up paddle boards. Yeah. It was right there. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, those, those uh, I mean, they're, it's so crazy to think, but there's a theater in Mount Vernon. Broadhead, Crab Orchard, and they're everywhere. You, you well, that was there. that was their entertainment. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they didn't have cell phones, but they Livingston had uh, other ways of entertainment too. We had roller rink. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. kind of funny. Yeah. And, and a softball field. Um, of course, the theater. Yeah. Yeah, different right. things like In Stanford, that. they had a roller rink above a grocery store. This yeah. one. <laughs> this one. Crazy enough, uh, was above a, uh, it was the top four of uh, Livingston Motors. Yeah, wow. So, uh, <laughs> and it was, we was, we had the, uh, an international truck, mm -hmm. well, international yeah. truck yeah. showroom here in Livingston. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And the roller rink was above the showroom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. When did that close? <laughs> yeah. the, uh, You're sneaking over there every now and then. The roller skating <laughs> on top. Oh, I, wish, still over yeah. I wish. <laughs> I think that the uh, casket factory burnt in the 1950s, maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of things burnt. No, yeah. Well, yeah. I that. Well, oh, uh, we talked about Rock Castle. The courthouse burnt in the 80s. Old wiring, I'm, I'm uh, guessing, and oh, before. Uh, oh, and one, one uh, well, it's uh, believed that somebody burned it down oh, yeah. because they uh, had incriminating evidence on them. I mean, this is like the first courthouse in public, yeah, like a model courthouse. Um, but you know, you talk about fire being a problem and in so many small towns, for whatever reason things burned, as the the communities were already sort of dispersing and they just didn't have the money to, yeah. you know, as, and, and there wasn't, you could drive to wherever it was that you would have went to the theater. It didn't have to be right on the main street in town. Mm -hmm. And so there just wasn't as much of a demand of, yeah. to um, to build those things back sometimes. Didn't yeah. have the money or the or the demand. Yeah. And it's a shame because there's a lot of really neat things that just mm -hmm. went up in it flames. Up in and, smoke, yeah. yeah. I mean, like the Howard Theater in Crow Orchard, you know, it's still there, you yeah. know, I mean, it, but it's real run down. Uh, but we're um, talking about travel, though, like my grandma was born in Broadhead, so she... You know, when she was born in uh, the 30s, she had a car the, her whole life. Uh, and my other grandma, though, was born out in Ottawa in, in uh, that area, Quail. And uh, you know, they didn't get a car till <laughs> way late until her, her, her uh, I don't know, maybe teens. Because, you know, they didn't need one. They, they did everything. They walked to school. They had everything, you know. Uh, they needed. They didn't have to go to town. They went to town. They wanted. If you had a car back in those days, you, no, was, you, you were was considered fancy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 The, that, rail, the railroad was really important. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, 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 it sprouted up all these communities. Yeah. Every every community in Rockcastle County probably got its start from the railroad. Yeah. So it, and it, and there was a lot of workers, and and that was probably more than half the population that was in mm -hmm. Livingston was there. So you worked on the railroad. On the railroad. Yeah. yeah. But then, whenever it left, that's kind of well. I mean, not I say it left because I mean there is still trains that come there, through. There, there's different rumors on why it left. I, mm -hmm. Basically, I believe that Livingston just couldn't hold it. Yeah, you know, the L and M was super growing. They needed more space, and and, mm -hmm. and they were moving on, and that's just progress. Yeah. But and when it left, Livingston took a pretty pretty major shock. Mm -hmm. You know, you took uh, you know a percentage of the population with it. In 1927. They uh, consolidated a lot of schools, and we built, and they built the Livingston School. Back then, it was just an academy, mm -hmm. and they were uh, little one-room schools that were sectioned all over this area. We had Sand Hill, Pine Hill, um, Piney Branch. Uh, I mean, they were just everywhere. Yeah. They had yeah. schools everywhere, mm -hmm. and they would all ship their kids once the school built. The high schoolers all came to Livingston, and then Livingston. It built a graded school, and that's why it's called a graded school because you had every every grade. grade. Right. Yeah. And you talked a lot about we we've already talked a lot about the school, but just going over that again, some of the things. I mean, it has many renovations, add-ons, additions. Um, what um, what it was built in 1927? Mm -hmm. Is that right? And then um, 
then the, you, like you said, the, the school grew and so forth. You got any good um, old school stories? <laughs> well, uh, <coughs> literally old school stories. <laughs> the uh, the um, there are so many. Yeah, yeah. Because we have a reunion every year that everybody some comes of the old timers yeah. come back. And I don't mean to call them that, but they're older. They're old. they remember this stuff. Sort of. <laughs> You know, and they probably wouldn't care, but I've had, we've had so many mm -hmm. memories of somebody having, uh, you know, recollecting something that mm -hmm. happened when they was in school. We had one of uh, some of the greatest ball players. We had cheerleaders. Mm -hmm. We had a, we had a, uh, a pig truck that wrecked here. And some, <laughs> some of the pigs run underneath the school and, and, and caused, caused a stink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, 1937, we'll just, like this, 1937, uh, the gymnasium used to be in school, mm -hmm. and due to the works program that was happening during the Depression, we talked about yeah. this, they built the, the new gym, mm -hmm. so it was a uh, governmental way to help boost the economy, mm -hmm. so they put people to work building these gym structures, and uh, the school was doing great. Uh, 1972, uh, Rockcastle County built a high school and decided to consolidate yep. high schoolers, so that left Livingston with a K through eight. Mm -hmm. That's where I came in. I started K through eight at Livingston mm -hmm. in 1984, and went all the way through, and then four years of high school, mm -hmm. obviously. And then in 1994, rather than go to a K through five, yeah. when they built the new middle school, they decided it wasn't uh, feasible. feasible for Livingston to have a uh, mm -hmm. school here anymore. Yeah. Very sensitive subject if you're talking to somebody that yeah. was a part of that. Yeah. So uh, I won't get into that soapbox, but I think it's a bad <laughs> idea, and I think they're figuring out today it was a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's something that we've, we've talked about, I don't know if on the shows or not, but, you know, if you look at the, the railroad was what made the towns. And then you had those school. entertainment hubs, and and really, the, uh, other than the railroad, it was the school. The school, and, and you know, I, especially you know, you talk about Kentucky being such a big basketball place, and, and your gym was your Friday night mm -hmm. community yeah, thing. I mean, that's where people came to watch, you know, but everybody knew everybody. You watched basketball. It kind of, there was that sense of sort of town pride, mm -hmm. even and when those schools, and especially the high schools, when the high schools left. That was a big hit, but now even like with Livingston, where there's like all of your kids get on a bus and go somewhere else to school, yeah, and you, yeah. they and those kids, it's not anybody, it's not those kids' fault, but they're never mm -hmm. going to have that Livingston memory, yeah. memory that mm -hmm. you know that you would have or that your grandparents mm -hmm. definitely would have had. Yeah. You know, Livingston. Even when I was in school, we'll go back to <clears throat> nineteen eighty nine when I was playing <clears throat> basketball in eighth grade, Livingston. Mm -hmm. Just to set up how the atmosphere was in 89. Mm -hmm. We had the smallest, we had probably less than half of the next school up. Yeah. So we was at a disadvantage every time mm -hmm. when we was playing sports. Yeah. Versus having 100 kids to pick through, yeah, we only had about eight. Yeah. Eight or ten. <laughs> Everybody's on the team. <laughs> so everybody, there was no tryout. Just, you want to play basketball? You're playing basketball. Yeah. So, but even then, I can still smell the wax. That's what, yeah. I can still smell the popcorn. Mm -hmm. I can feel the heat <laughs> because the gym was so packed. Yeah. Right. To see a team that hardly ever won. Yeah. But even in 1989, the gym was so packed mm -hmm. just to watch the ball players. And to pay a little homage to the Preston Pirate, even with those conditions, Preston Park Gymnasium, the girls team beat everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was yeah. that kind of coach. Yeah. I mean, that's how to throw that out there. Yeah. But, you know, not that the boys basketball team had bad coaches. It was just, they just went on good. <laughs> <laughs> we had good coaches. We just, the Preston Park was in a league of his own. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I, my one memory of coming to Livingston was during basketball. And I, I, I'm pretty sure my brother was playing because I was not. You know, I, you know, in, in '90 I was five, so uh, I wouldn't have, I, w I probably, I wouldn't have been playing. And I know he, you know, he was, he would have been playing, but coming there, and I just remember it being like so packed. Mm -hmm. You know, and I mean, everybody, it, it's not, you know, the size isn't that big, but just you have all the schools coming here, and it's going to be a big, yeah, even, it was, even it was a big event, everybody even for can. a third, fourth grade basketball game. And, and then the, uh, in looking back now. Of all the schools, we still have 
The original one. The original one. Yeah. The yeah. original high school. Mount Vernon, of course, got tore down. Broadhead got tore down. Mm -hmm. Roundstone never had a high school, but Livingston is the only original high school that's, yeah. that's left. So we, you know, we can complain about not having a school, but at least we can you have the original. walk down the yeah. halls. Still yeah. right down the halls. Because, I mean, Mount Vernon's old school. Like it was, you had the gym, and then on top of that was like a, it was like a little rafter thing that you would look down. But I mean, yeah. that'd be really cool. I think they it, they tore it's built. The new school was built right where yeah. it was at. So, yeah, they yeah. tore it down. Yeah, and but the school and and I and I hate to refer it like this, but when I was campaigning for funding mm -hmm. with the county, I said, hey, look, you know, three strikes, we we're out. Yeah, we lost the railroad, we lost the high school, and then we lost the grade school. Yeah, and I said, you all have. You know, when I'm kind of taking my stand for Livingston, mm -hmm. I said, you all have, uh, we've, we've, we've ex Livingston out. Yeah. And here's the problem. Here's a little bit of a political soapbox mm -hmm. for you. I'm going to throw this in there. Go for it. <laughs> Livingston is situated in the fifth district, mm -hmm. the fifth district of this county. Yeah. By numbers, by miles, it's twice as big as any other district. Yeah. That magistrate has to cover twice the country. Mm -hmm. Livingston is a supply hub yeah. to say not a huge supply mm -hmm. hub mm -hmm. but we need gas we need this the only way that we can really get the fifth district to grow population wise because these populate these districts are set up by population yeah so obviously there's more area per person mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in the fifth district than they are anywhere in the county yeah why not create a little bit better supply chain here in Livingston. Mm -hmm. That way, the fifth district can populate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah. we're only sitting at about seventeen thousand plus in Rockcastle County. Mm -hmm. To put that in perspective, Madison County has eighty-five thousand. Yeah, Laurel yeah. County has sixty thousand. Yeah, Pulaski County has sixty-five thousand. Jackson County and Rockcastle are, way, are under way twenty thousand. Yeah. So, we, if Livingston was more of a supply hub for the mm -hmm. fifth district. We could populate the, yeah. here in the fifth district and not affect anywhere else in the county. Yeah, right? but yeah. their people's not going to move here if there's no supplies. supplies. Yeah, right? and the school would be a big and the school big, would be a big yeah. plus because it would create jobs, mm -hmm. and then it would help the local fuel stations, mm -hmm. the local family dollar store, yeah. grocery store slash mm -hmm. stuff. That's why it's important to invest mm -hmm. in this area. Mm -hmm. Well, and. We'll, we'll go on that, of course, loads of more questions, but like, tell us about some of the stuff that has been going on since you know, you've been mayor of Trail Town, because that's a big thing. A, a lot of times, and I'll, I'll give, give credit to Livingston, you see places like, like Crab Orchard, you know, in the early 1800s, all the way through the 1800s was a huge place. Um, but now, I mean, there's nothing, man, there's, there's nothing. Stanford, I would say, has done a real good job revamping their downtown, uh, but like even like Mount Vernon. But just Livingston, though, there's a lot more I feel like, as far as being from my castle, coming there's a lot more reason to come to Livingston than there is to go to any of the other places. So. Well, they, uh, we had to. When I first became mayor, I knew that we had some things that other people didn't have naturally. Yeah, yeah. obviously, uh, Rock Castle River, the Daniel Boone National Forest, mm -hmm. some uh, Civil War history, mm -hmm. and that 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 whole time that before I was ever mayor, I thought if we could to uh, we could try to capitalize on that stuff, mm -hmm. then we it wouldn't take a lot of money to get Livingston growing. Yeah. So then this trail town idea came up through the state, mm -hmm. and I, without a doubt, I thought that Livingston would be, that would be a, a good thing, mm -hmm. because we've got trails, we've got mm -hmm. countryside, we've got the river, which is a natural trail. Yeah. It's a natural access route. It was used a lot for uh, mills and, you know, and, and transporting goods mm -hmm. back in those days, so why not use it for kayaking, yeah. canoeing, fishing, capitalize on that stuff. So we had to find a niche. Yeah. These other communities that struggling, they may not have found that niche, that draw, that yeah. niche. Well, in Livingston, we found that niche, mm -hmm. and so we started uh, working with the state, got some signage and some other mm -hmm. things to help mm -hmm. draw people in Livingston. To us that's, that live here, 
it's something we're used to. Yeah. But to somebody that lives in downtown uh, Louisville or, or Cincinnati, they think we're living in the Garden of Eden. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. they're, they're just looking around all the hills. Oh, and, man, man. and some of the people that's moved in here, like uh, Colonel Sanders back there, <laughs> he thinks he's got the best view of America. Yeah, right. yeah. And I'm thinking, you're just in my backyard. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we have to, the, the thing that the county has to do, and I think that they've struggled with, in administrations that's been a part of it is being open-minded mm -hmm. this ain't one thing i had to reprogram myself as i was mayor and, and sitting in <coughs> meeting rooms with other mayors across the county mm -hmm. is i'm the mayor of a city mm -hmm. i'm not just mayor of little old pitiful livingston yeah yeah i am just as important mm -hmm. because if i just had 10 bodies if i just had one body in my town mm -hmm. i am just as important as any mayor across the state yeah. of Kentucky. Yeah. Yes, uh, atmosphere and conditions down here are different. Mm -hmm. I have no staff. My yeah. only staff is a clerk and a water guy. Yeah. <laughs> if you call and uh, say you need something, I'm probably going to be the one to show up. <laughs> that That's tough. Yeah. That's tough. That's that's the uh, hurdles that I had to cross one day, and, and this is kind of off the record. A guy had an accident. Mm-hmm. There was no law enforcement that could get to him. Mm -hmm. I called dispatch and say, this guy's had an accident. It's gruesome. <laughs> yeah. What do I do? Yeah. They say, well, you go sit with him till we can get there. <laughs> wow. I'm not, you know, a medical <laughs> man, and I don't want to be, <laughs> you know, but I sit there with him because yeah. that was part of my job responsibility mm -hmm. at that mm -hmm. time. So, um, getting back to the thing tourism is the largest industry in the world mm -hmm. the bad thing about it in the state of kentucky it's the second largest yeah it should be the largest comfortably yeah but it's not tourism is not the largest industry in kentucky they have recognized that mm -hmm. they want to make some changes the trail towns stuff started happening mm -hmm. livingston if uh, governor Bashir hadn't have been from uh, dawson's creek yeah, Livingston would have whooped everybody mm -hmm. about being the first trip. Yeah, town. was it the second though? It was the second, second trip town yeah. because they had a little yeah. bit of a uh, political. <laughs> political <thing laughs> on. But, we, but even even they would tell you, yeah, the powers of being to state, we whooped them pretty good. And I'll say that on the record. <laughs> yeah. we, we 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 whooped them, and that reminds me, we went up against the city of Berea twice. Yeah, in uh, raising money. Mm -hmm. The city of Bria's got as many people as oh, the county as Rock Castle. <laughs> yeah. They're running both of them about 17,000. Yeah. We've whooped Bria back to back on, yeah. on money raising. <laughs> we, we've got a lot of people that, uh, that are inspired yeah. and are go-getters. Mm -hmm. and, and it'd be tough for other communities mm -hmm. to, you know, to battle with us because we've always been the underdog. Mm -hmm. And since grade school, since grade school, <laughs> yeah. I've walked out of that gym right down that alley many a night, my butt whooped. <laughs> so, you know, uh, but uh, there was a hunger, mm -hmm. and above all, there was a passion. Yeah, and passion this is the way it kind of plays a nine to five worker will give you work till five o'clock, mm -hmm. a passionate worker. Non-stop. Non-stop. Yeah. It never ends. Yeah. So that's the difference in the people that we've had, the, mm -hmm. the volunteers. Mm -hmm. I may not have had that nine-to-five staff, but I've had passionate people mm -hmm. that's got on board and changed the landscape yeah. Yeah. and made things for a better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, now, real quickly, what are some of the things that, uh, you know, if, you, if somebody wanted to come, because we have plenty of listeners around the state that are listening and, and meet people around the country and you know, even some around the world. Um, well, what's some of the things they could do if they come to Livingston? If they come to Livingston, and the, the, the vision in the beginning, of course, we're a small town, and uh, all of our finances and things like that for extra money to mm -hmm. build with, we have to uh, utilize grants and mm -hmm. uh, donations. But if you come to Livingston, the vision was that you could come to Livingston on a Friday, or whatever day you choose, yeah. we'll just say Friday. We tell you we can plan out your weekend, Mm -hmm. You could stay here. You don't have to leave. Then you could go back to work on Monday. Yeah. And you've had an experience 
in Livingston. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The problem is today is most kids, their biggest experience and biggest adventure is Fortnite yeah. or the TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or a movie screen. Mm -hmm. Here, you get to experience a full atmosphere feeling. Yeah. You could come to Livingston on a Friday. We could set your schedule. You could fish. You could kayak. Mm -hmm. You can horseback ride. You can... Uh, what they call a rock climb mm -hmm. you can trail hike you can go do historical uh hiking you mm -hmm. can bike ride anything that has to do with the outdoors and activity we've mm -hmm. got you can swim mm -hmm. you can canoe you know there's just that's what all you can bouldering is becoming a popular thing here bouldering we, bouldering bouldering is we have this new 40 acre park mm -hmm. that we're we're under construction right now we're re renovating yeah. that we call fish point park mm -hmm. kind of under kind of the name yeah. respect yeah. back to the old Livingston name in fish point park it's a 40 acre trail hike that it's on the other end of town mm -hmm. that uh has big boulders big yeah. huge boulders at your own risk <laughs> <laughs> People has been coming down from colleges, they'll lay out a mat yeah. in case they slip, <laughs> and they climb these boulders. Yeah. And that How is thick a, is this mat? It, uh, yeah, <laughs> it, it's pretty thick, yeah. <laughs> pretty thick, but they that has become a new adventure. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and we've been uh, recognizing several bouldering mm -hmm. blogs across mm -hmm. the, the state. Mm -hmm. But like I said, fishing, hiking, canoeing, bike riding, swimming, that's all popular. One thing that uh, one of our hiking trails has is one of the only two things mm -hmm. in the United States. We have a spring that is probably bigger than this room, mm -hmm. and it's probably unto and how deep. Yeah. That bubbles up. Mm -hmm. It can, it constantly boils. Yeah. We call it the Boils Trail. We have a trail that goes down there that way you can see this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. natural phenomenon. Yeah. Uh, what happens is. Livingston's got, or Rockcastle County's got over 200 caves on this side of the county. Yeah. So um, it's like a honeycomb. Mm -hmm. That's why you see a lot of sinkholes. Yeah. The water comes down this stream called uh, the Sinks. It's about mm -hmm. six miles from here. And then it comes down and it just disappears into the earth. When it disappears into the earth, it travels along underwater caverns and bubbles up down okay. here. Wow. The main reason why the uh, train. Uh, the railroad came to Livingston mm -hmm. was that spring. Oh, it cool. was clean, fresh water, mm -hmm. kind of comes out of the climax area, yeah. and it sits there and bubbles up all the time and has never run dry. Wow. That's mm. pretty cool. So we got a trail to that. Mm -hmm. So that's what you can do in Livingston. We have uh, uh, hiking trails out Hoosier mm -hmm. Knob, about three miles from here on Wildcat Mountain, that gives you a historical. Mm -hmm. uh, reference to the battle that was on Camp Wildcat. Yep. So there's, you can actually spend a week in here. We have the gymnasium that's, mm -hmm. you can play ball in, you can uh, have birthday parties, weddings. We've got the depot that uh, mm -hmm. we've used for weddings. Uh, uh, one of our attractions here that's just south of town is Rockcastle River Trading Company. It's mm -hmm. It's been sponsored by John Karloftis. Of course, that's his family. Yeah. And they have a big uh, nature walk down yeah. there. You go on down, we've got uh, John, John Hamilton's Rock Castle Riverside Camping mm -hmm. Area that you can pull in. He's got over 25 uh, spots of camping. Mm -hmm. You can visit some of our local outfitters, Red Hill Horse Camp, uh, Just Kicking It Ranch, Canoes and Kayaks, mm -hmm. and our newest one that we're really happy with, uh, with what he's doing is a Rock Castle Outdoor Company that you mm -hmm. can rent stand-up yeah. paddleboards. Yeah. Uh, well, there's a plenty of doing it. It seems like the, uh, more of the outdoors feel. It's an outdoors you know. thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. What we hope to do down here is to establish a, uh, a touristy niche, try yeah. to capitalize on some of those dollars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because the most, and, and of course you're going to have some cases that may not fall this way, but most of the part, if somebody's coming here to take advantage of what you've got in your area, they're really good about taking care of it. Yeah. They'll come in and spend their money mm -hmm. and then they'll go back home. Mm -hmm. And the most that the locals are affected is the fact that they have things that uh, you don't normally have for a, a town this, small, this yeah. size. Yeah. Because people is actually coming in, spending money into the local economy mm -hmm. and it's cycling yeah. through to this area. Mm -hmm. That's important. Yeah. Right now, we, uh, I think Rock Castle County has turned
turned over the same dollar. Mm -hmm. You don't want to turn over the same dollar. Yeah. You want new money coming, coming in. in. Yeah. Then your turn. Then your wheel of uh, economics is getting bigger. Yeah. So yeah. that's what we kind of we want the that wheel for Livingston to keep just keep going. getting bigger. Yeah, yeah. Because there's new money. Mm -hmm. More new money, the more new things. Yeah. So that's the more happier. Have more yeah. citizens, yeah. Uh, bigger staff, and I, you might have a new employee. <laughs> yeah, you get bigger staff, and and all in all, and keeping it in our small town values mm -hmm. and, and uh, culture. That's, yeah, that's yeah. The thing. Now I do want to ask you. You said the w, WPA built the gym, right? Mm -hmm. And you said those were spread out all across the nation. How many are left, or do you have any idea? Or? I would say built in 1937. They, I would have to get in there and really look, but mm -hmm. you know most buildings that was pre 1950, they're getting to be a dying breed. Yeah, so, you yeah. know they. Uh, you be, still see some of them. I don't know really if there's there's very few of them that are still used for like high school basketball because yeah. yeah. most of the schools have. Updated, consolidated, yeah. or whatever. You still see some used in you know similar methods than yours, but you mm -hmm. don't see you don't see too many of them. Yeah. We have something that, uh, as a city, that a lot of people covet. And mm -hmm. I, I was talking to the city uh, manager, Mount Vernon, Josh Bray, mm -hmm. and he was said, "I would give anything if we had a facility like this to build this. You know, it yeah. costs a lot of money. Oh. Yeah, it costs a lot of money." Mm -hmm. We have that as a city that kids can come in and yeah. just you know have a good time, and a lot of a lot of city governments would love to have this. Yeah. They could have their own events, you know, and things like mm -hmm. that. And they don't have to worry about going through the school system or another a church or mm -hmm. A, mm -hmm. another private entity. Yeah. So it's it's pretty pretty, good. pretty awesome. Well, the, you got anything else, Daniel? No. I don't either. Uh, once again, hey, thanks thanks for taking the time on your day off, right? Yeah. To uh, <laughs> come talk to us about some Livingston history. We may have to meet up again because there's there's so much more to talk about. Some, yeah, you know, we we just structures. scratching the surface. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, again, if you want to uh, reach out to us, you can find us out on Twitter or Facebook at KY History Pod. Um, email us the Lamb Between the Meadows at gmail dot com. Uh, you can check out you know, check out everything we got there as far as that goes. If you want to find Jason, come to Livingston. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, wow. City of Livingston at windstream dot net and you, or is it dot net or dot dot net. Uh, 606-453-2061. Call us anytime with anything that you might have questions about. And if you hear this podcast or, and I've said something that uh, wasn't <laughs> accurate, just let me know. <laughs> I, I'd like to be updated. Yeah. So thanks again for listening, and uh, we'll see you next time.